your endodontic therapy, your periodontal therapy and restorative, which is your prosthetic therapy, will go hand in hand. There is no first I'll do my endo and then later I'll give the case to the period. No, all the three will work simultaneously. First, you will relieve the occlusion and start with your endo. Simultaneously, you'll start with your scaling initially. And then once your endo is done and then again, you'll go to your perio by, uh, by uh, removing your flap surgery and then granulation tissue will be removed and then placing your uh, uh, placing your graft and then suturing it back and then again it goes to the restorative part where you place a crown on it and then constant follow-up so all the three consultations will be going in hand in hand not just one after the other but then it will go together right so your endodontic periodontal and restorative part will be working together to achieve the better result you know the Simon et al. classification or you have the Cohen classification where they say it's a primary, a class one primary endo, class two primary perio, uh, class three primary endo and secondary perio, primary perio, secondary endo and the two combined. So these classifications you all know and there are there in the standard textbooks. Well, this is a classification given in the 2017 workshop. This is based on the treatment planning so that the moment you go into this classification, you know how the prognosis of the tooth will be and also what could be the treatment planning. So this is the new classification, though it is not added in the standard textbooks as of now, it will be added in near future. Okay, if you go into this classification, it says the type of the lesion, it depends upon two types, whether it's an endoperial lesion with the root damage or without the root damage. So if it is with the root damage, there is certain limitations for us to treat the root damage, whether depending upon it's a horizontal fracture or a vertical fracture, or it is involving your pulpal perforation or beyond your pulp uh, CEJ. So or if there is an external resorption, then your prognosis will change. If there is a fracture, you can expect it to be a fair to poor prognosis, depending upon the level of the fracture. Okay, if there is a only pulp chamber perforation, then you can expect a fairer prognosis with that. Okay, if it is an external root resorption, still you can save the tooth with a fairer prognosis. Okay, so depending upon the classification, we will know the prognosis of the tooth so that you can guarantee the, uh, guarantee the patient about the uh, result of the treatment that you are doing, right? And the periodontal lesions without root damage could be again two types, that is lesions with periodontitis patients or non-periodontitis patients, which means the general periodontist in, in relation to that patient, okay? If there is a periodontal pocket only to the one surface, even if it's a narrow or a wide, we can expect a good results from it. But if it's a deep periodontal pocket involving more than one surface, then the again, the prognosis will go back to your fair or to the poorer prognosis, as well as I, as I have already mentioned you, if there is a grade three mobility, then you cannot expect the tooth to be doing better better because even though it's a, as it is already grade three the moment you start with your endo it still worsens and also if you go back and given uh, if it's an occlusion due to the occlusion forces it will again worsen the treatment so it could be it could be a failure so you need to know when you have to start and take up the case and make sure you're promising the patient that this tooth could stand in your oral cavity so this classification is based on what is like it will give a better prognosis before even you start the case, right? And the main pathways of communication due to the pulp and the periodontion, okay? This is two, two it's just not a two subjects, but then two, uh, two tissues that are being developing together in the developmental stage of the butt stage where they, they both come from your mesoderms. So you need to know what are the communication between the pulp and the periodontium as well. Right. So developmental origins, which are inside during the development, you will all the teeth will have apical foramina and it could be a communication between your pulp and your periodontium. Right. And the accessory canals and the lateral canals are the similarly, they could be a, they could be a, again a pathway between your pulp and periodontium and congenital absence of cementum so that whenever there is a cementum absence, your dentinal tubules are directly into your periodontium. So there is a pathway between your pulp and your periodontium. Okay, and the permeability of the cementum, if it's increased, then they, you have again the pathway. And the developmental grooves, the, like your palato gingival grooves, could be also your uh, pathways of, uh, in fact, pathways from your pulp to the periodontium. 
and enamel projections, enamel pearls at the cervical area, all these are the developmental origins, which are the pathway from your pulp to your periodontium, right? And pathological, pathological are your, if there is an empty space that are created due to the distraction of your Sharpie's fibers, then it is a pathological condition, right? And if your vertical fractures, still it's a pathological condition and an idiopathic resorption which is both either internal or external it could be also a pathological condition loss of cementum due to the irritants then it is a pathological conditions okay these are the pathological conditions where they create a pathway between your pulp and the periodontium and uh, hydrogenic origin that is due to our our negligence could be your exposure of dentinal tubules while root planing. Well, whenever you we are doing your curettage or root planing, so then you could accidentally sometimes expose your dentinal tubules, which could be create a pathway between your pulp and the periodontium, right? And uh, accidental lateral perforations whenever you are attempting uh, your uh, endodontic procedures, then also it could be a pathway to the periodontium. And root fractures due to endodontic procedure whenever you are placing your post for example so at that time whenever you, if you are applying a, a, a post and the more pressure then it could lead to a fractures vertical fractures so that could be again your pathway between your pulp and the periodontium so these are the things which you can avoid are your hydrogenic things whereas your pathological and developmental origins we cannot avoid but well we can treat them better way so that we can get a better result so before, whenever your patient is having, just know where, why the patient, listen to the patient, what he is exactly complaining. So that the moment you start listening to the patient, you will understand whether it is initially the endo or the perio problem, okay? If the patient is complaining about your sharp pain, then that is your pulpal, typical pulpal pain. So the moment patient is saying that he couldn't sleep at nights and he's having a terrible pain whenever he's in a reclined position, then that is your pulpal pain. So your pulpal should be treated first, right? So if the, if the pain is like a throbbing pain, it's still there whenever it's chewing, uh, the patient experiences much more pain because whenever he's applying his mastigatory force, the tooth is sitting into the periodontal ligament and it's constantly rupturing the periodontal ligament. That's where it is a problem with your perio. So you need to just listen to the patient, his chief complaint and what kind of pain he's complaining of. That will give you an idea where it has started, right? So whether it is starting from your endo or your perio, you will start with endo, no doubt about it. But to go ahead with perio, you need to know what 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 exactly it is starting with. Okay, if it's like if, if the tooth is starting with a per, endo, for every case you will start with your endo. Whether it's like mostly 95 percent of the times you will treat your endo, but sometimes you might not need doing your period on periodontal treatment okay if it's like an apical periodontitis you you don't go raise the flap and do the periodontal therapy even if it's an apical periodontitis or apical abscess also you don't do the periodontal therapy unless and until there is some bone defect okay so your periodontic therapy would be sufficient for it so here are like just a few things to be noted here see whenever the lesion is due to endo, due to carious lesion, then the vitality will be changed. If it's due to the periodontal lesion, the vitality will be still intact unless and until there is a retro communication with the periodontium and the pulp, right? And it is, as I said, it has a sharp throbbing pain if it's like a pulpal pain. If it's a periodontial pain, it is like a, uh, it, it would be a dull pain. Okay, and swelling would be till the attached gingiva if it is if the origin is from your pulp, and the, if it is due to the periodontal origin, then it could be confined to the attached mucosa. And if you trace the if you trace the trace the sinus tract with your GP, it would lead to your endodontic lesion where exactly it has started. So it would lead to your uh, whatever the, uh, uh, whatever the uh, root it has been involved whether it's a muser buckle or a mesolingual so it just traces exactly where your endo is 
or it's where the origin where it has started okay if you if you lead to the periodontal lesion if it is due to the periodontal lesion it will just go into your furcal area which says that it is due to your periodontal periodontium origin not because of your palpal origin okay so you can expect more bone loss if it is a periodontal origin again and if it's like a pulper origin you could expect a, a confined a confined area of bone loss okay this is just you to have an idea so that you will know which treatment you have to start initially so this is the entire treatment planning for whatever the type of lesion it is depending upon the initially it was like primary endo primary perio as i have said so let us see if it is a primary endodontic origin you will go with your endodontal therapy which is according to your standards where you will concentrate on your isolation as well as your irrigation these two play a major role for the success of your endo as well as perio when it, when it is concerned with the perio because you need to have a more germ free area in your you cannot create a aseptic conditions in your root canal anyhow you will have one or like you will be having some germs so what we can take care is you do a good isolation go ahead with an excellent irrigation and then place a calcium hydroxide or a triple antibiotic paste for few days at least for one to two weeks so that uh, so that whatever the it creates more uh, osteogenesis as well as it creates more uh, aseptic conditions in your root canal so if it is like primary endodontic origin you will just go ahead with your endo that's it root canal and you will reevaluate re whether the lesion is progressing or it has stopped if it stopped you just you, you can just go ahead with your prosthetic part okay if it's just a periodontal lesion you will do your periodontal therapy which is your scaling and a root planing and you will still evaluate because still are it it is not communicating with your endo okay so if it's an endo you will only treat with endo if it's like perio you will treat only with the perio now the question comes what if it's like primary perio primary endo and then secondary perio so initially you will go ahead and start with your endodontic therapy and then do your periodontal therapy right and then you will reevaluate re if it is subsiding then you can just leave, leave it and still you can go with the follow ups of 3 6 9 months okay and if it is not resolving then you can expect a root fracture with that so if it's root fracture if it can be if it is like the middle third or the or the coronal third you can seal it but if you are expecting a root fracture below your middle third which cannot be treated then it could be go for an extraction right or if it's a molar then you can go ahead with your hemisection where you can uh, section your teeth at the bifurcation into two and you can use the two, two teeth as two premolars right so if if it is a primary perio and also involved with your endo you will still start with your endo and then and then do your perio and here you will do a regenerative therapy where you will use your either your hydroxyapatite crystals or the bone matrix and then placing your membranes on it membranes could be your gtr or collagen membrane you can use these membranes and then go ahead with the treatment so if it is like primary periodontal lesion and secondary endodontic then you still you will go with your endo first and then simultaneously you will go with your perio using your flap surgeries right if it's a true combine also the same case you will go with your endo first and then perio simultaneously placing your grafts uh, uh, removing your flap and then placing your uh, grafts and membrane and then do a follow up if if it is like still it is still going ahead and it is not resolving then we then it would go for an extraction